What first got me into music before I was old enough to actually understand the nuance of what I was listening to were the gatefold sleeves that housed my dad's huge vinyl collection. He had a lot of progressive and psychedelic rock by bands of extremely hairy men like King Crimson and Yes and Uriah Heep. And each of these records came in brilliantly lurid packaging with tons of colour and illustrations and lyrics I could read along with without actually having to listen to the 20 minute long song suites with extended flute solos inside them. There's something really magic about album art from the 60s and 70s, about the effort that was taken to fill every inch of available space and how it enriched the experience of owning and playing each record. Of course, vinyl's back in a big way now and with it, hopefully, the kind of thoughtfully packaged album art that bands used to produce will soon be back in fashion. This isn't to say that bands haven't put out distinctive artwork since. Think of the iconic covers to Michael Jackson's Bad and Thriller, Blondie's Parallel Lines, The Score by The Fugees, Pink Floyd's The Wall. Most rock bands would recognise a piece of Stone Roses art or a Smiths cover, The Swimming Baby from Nevermind, Kanye's Bears, Drake's Profile, certainly The Gorillas. Down the years there's always been the odd bit of album art that really hits the mark, be it Queen or Madness, U2 or Joy Division. But I do think it's true that with the rise of downloading and digital formats, bands with truly original art have become rather scarce. Radiohead have been an exception since 1994 when the Oxford band's lead singer and songwriter Tom York asked Dan Rickwood aka Stanley Donwood, his art student friend from Exeter University, to design the cover art for My Iron Lung, Radiohead's first single from their second album The Bends. This began a collaboration between Donwood and York which lasts to the present day, producing art that not only complements the music on each Radiohead album, but actually extends the thematic narrative explored by the music itself. What Donwood and York came up with for My Eye and Lung was a fairly standard alt-rock image, a distorted, discoloured, MTV-inspired shot of suited men with their heads lopped off. Might be a funeral, a memorial service, a presidential visit. The purpose of the commission was to reflect visually the grungy pop of the band's second coming, and especially perhaps the off-kilter, nirvana breakdown portion of Radiohead's great comeback song. Don Wood worked on the album cover for The Benz after this initial collaboration, producing its now iconic cover, which he created by filming a CPR mannequin with a cassette camera. As a piece of album art, it really is a striking composition, an otherworldly expression poised somewhere between ecstasy and death throes, perfectly in sync with the medical condition that gives the album its name and the genre of music it contains, that is, generally downbeat, melancholic indie shot through with the sudden euphoria of a gorgeous vocal melody or a soaring Johnny Greenwood solo. From the Benz period onward, Donwood and York have produced the entirety of Radiohead's artwork. During the OK Computer era, they found a more consistent and idiosyncratic aesthetic, one very closely aligned to the band's music, the songs on OK Computer focusing on themes of urban alienation and frustration, the depersonalisation of the individual through corporate interests and new technology, and a sort of postmodern sense of culture falling apart and being replaced by meaningless buzzwords, the white noise of information overload, the inescapability of a pre-millennial descent into postmodern numbness. The artwork that accompanied the album and its singles realised these same themes by creating computer collages comprising half-legible scribblings, logos, signs, skeletal cityscapes, fragments of lyric and the odd recurring motif like the two stickmen shaking hands which York has described as representing exploitation. The colours used throughout a pale blue or washed out white suggesting a bleaching, a dulling of emotion and true feeling against which the occasional motorway or aeroplane or snatch of health related advice in English or Greek all work together to reflect the sensibility of these dark complex songs and their palettes. 
For the band's less accessible follow-up, Kid A, Donwood and York struck upon an aesthetic that linked these two great eras in Radiohead's history and yet imbued the new recordings with their own distinct personality. If the main theme of the OK Computer artwork was inundation and emotional disembodiment, the Kid A artwork took a turn toward the apocalyptic, with the album's cover featuring a blood-black sky and mountain rage devoid of human life and immediately evoking that jittery line in Idiotech about an ice age coming. Donwood has said he saw the mountain range as a landscape of power, some sort of cataclysmic power existing in landscape, only the human component is there as well. The cover photo is based partially on a still from the Kosovo War, and there's another image, that of a red swimming pool used on the spine and disc that connects to ideas of state-sponsored terrorism, thereby emphasising our own role in bringing about the end of days. The Kid A artwork also introduced the modified bear logo which the band still use and which is black mirror-ish in the cuteness and horror it combines an anti-logo for an age saturated by clean, bright, optimistic symbols like the McDonald's Golden Arches, the Walt Disney Castle and the Nike Tick. For the next album, Amnesiac, Donwood and York took another left turn, choosing the image of an old, beaten up library book and a pen drawn, weeping Minotaur. Donwood has spoken of the Minotaur having been inspired by a time he found himself lost in London, ruminating on the maziness of both its layout and history, the madness of the city and our own role as individuals in its creation. The tattered book was how he and York imagined stumbling across the music inside, as songs removed from time, scruffy, messy, lost and dark as hell. Looking at the book on the cover always reminds me of the kind of cursed, haunted volumes found in horror films like The Evil Dead, books capable of summoning demons, only in Radiohead's case, with the twist that the demons they conjure are already inside us, a reminder that we, like the weeping Minotaur, are forever half-beast. After Amnesiac came Hail to the Thief, and with it perhaps Donwood's best design, Pacific Coast, a road map of Hollywood with LA transfigured, its buildings replaced by a combination of words taken from advertising hoardings and media phrases in vogue at the time, lots of them connected to the invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan. The colours here are bright and chipper, reflecting the shiny but vacuous veneer of advertising language and working in contrast to the dark phrases Donwood and York have supplied. Other artworks in the series feature London, New York, Baghdad and Grozny, encouraging us to understand the modern connections between these places, the vibrant, moneyed metropolises of the West and the war-torn, bombed-out remains of cities in the Middle East. Donwood produced the In Rainbows artwork in a neighbouring studio as the band were recording the album, and the sensuality of songs like Nude and Reckoner are brilliantly captured in his simple but colourful design. The image behind the title, rendered in wax on painted canvas and made with syringes, looks to me like an imploding star, an image suggestive of either sex itself or the womb, the matter of life mingling and exploding into something new. For the King of Limbs, Donwood abandoned an initial idea to make individual portraits of the band after listening to the weird, disjointed songs they were busy recording. He's spoken of the music evoking cathedrals of trees and fog, another of the band's lyrical motifs, and the fairy tale resonances of the final product remind me of the band's famous video to their song There There. But while that video had York spying on cute woodland animals, the King of Limbs art features odd tree-like creatures, maybe monsters or spirits, as extensions of the twisted, tangled natural world evoked in King of Limbs tracks such as Bloom, Morning Mr Magpie, Feral and Lotus Flower. Donwood pursued an interest in natural processes for the band's latest full-length release, A Moonshaped Pool, exposing painted canvases to the wind and rain for weeks at a time, then photographing the results and editing them in Photoshop. 
I really love that avant-garde swirl of warped and muted paint he and York chose for the front cover, which at first glance I thought was an aerial photograph of rocky terrain, then manipulated photographs of a biology experiment, and then some sort of amped up raw sharky ink blotting. The evolution of Donwood and York's art has mirrored that of the band itself, starting off in recognisably post-grunge indie terrain and ending up in King of Limbs world where meaning is elusive, traditional forms are either dispensed with completely or warped beyond all recognition, and the natural world rises to reclaim the environment, doing away with human efforts to tame it, our smoking factories and twisting highways and flood of jargon and information technology. Donwood has a true partnership with the band and as a result I always look forward to seeing the art that accompanies a new Radiohead release because I know by now what to expect. Something considered, something essentially egoless and guaranteed to sync perfectly with the new set of songs and whatever strange, disarming and daring direction they've taken. Thanks for watching my second video on the Earth to Submission channel. I'll be posting weekly on uh, movies, on art, on video games, on music. So if you enjoyed it, please like, please subscribe and see you next week.